Hi everybody, welcome to another Live with Children here in San Diego for SLS 2023. It's the last day of the show and I'm delighted to be at the Festo booth with Sam Stoney, who's actually going to give me a quick overview of Festo, but actually we're going to talk about some of the challenges customers have been facing in the world of automation in the last 12 months and also look ahead to what some of the trends are within this space. So Sam, first of all, good afternoon, how are you? I'm doing great, yourself? I'm very, very well, thank you. So. Uh, how has the show gone so far? Because we are at the end, of, we're coming towards the end of day three. So the show has been, uh, I've been coming to the shows for about 20 plus years now, and this is one of the busiest I've seen. It's, it's wonderful seeing people coming back post COVID. Uh, this being a very healthcare conscious group, it was, uh, it was quite empty during those years. And it, it, seems like, uh, it seems like business is back as usual. Fantastic. Well, I did speak to the CEO of SLS and they said they've had 7,200 registrants. Uh, which is a record for them. So that that's is wonderful. Fantastic. Right, so let's talk about Festo. Um, who are Festo and what do you do? So Festo has its roots in industrial automation over the past hundred plus years. Right. Um, and, uh, and, and this group, the life science group, has been taking that, that high throughput industrial automation and applying it to the, the life sciences, specifically in the area of lab automation for this show, but also in developing clinical diagnostics instruments, components for those instruments, and in the biopharma arena with process control. Right. Well, it's really interesting, I think it's quite opportunity to talk to you because obviously, because of COVID, automation has come to the fore. Mm -hmm. yes. And a lot of people have now started using automation in far greater numbers through necessity than they had previously pre-COVID. So what have been some of the challenges that customers have come to you in the last 12 months now that they're starting to use automation more? So that's an interesting question. I think COVID really did change the game in, in a couple of significant ways. Um, one was uh, a massive shortage of consumables, things like, like the pipettes that we use to, uh, to take medical samples and put into the instrumentation. Sure. But also there's the, uh, the handling of, of medical samples. I don't think anybody realized how hard it is to take a, uh, a simple vial sure. and remove the cap and take a sample out and put it into a diagnostic instrument for a COVID test. Right. Um, if there's one big trend that we're seeing in this SLAS is people are looking at that much more closely as an area to automate. Hence, uh, my colleagues talking about decappers and, and talking about the pipetting systems. Uh, this has been a real growth area and a uh, place that we've been contributing a lot. Right, okay. And in terms of other challenges that customers have faced, is there anything else that has come to the fore, have been quite common questions that you've been getting now that people have moved into the automation space? I think the big trend now is to look beyond taking a, a, a chemical assay on a bench top and automating that, but looking at, at all of the peripherals around that, integrating multiple bench top instruments to, uh, to perform a, a bigger function than just a simple test. Uh, all around us, we're seeing manufacturers expand to, rather than making an instrument, to integrating multiple instruments. Now, as experts within this field and helping a lot of the companies exhibiting here with their sort of instruments and pieces of equipment with automation, what has been the impact of AI and machine learning in terms of this space, and what impact do you think it will have going forward? That is a really interesting question, and I've been hearing machine learning and AI a lot at this show. I think at this point, it's, a, it's an area of interest and not necessarily an area of action. Right. Uh, that's gonna change a lot in the next few years. One of the key things that needs to be done to do that is to be able to have a, a good way to take the data off of lab instruments and, and bring it into the cloud and, and allow people to use programming languages and processes that come from the, the computing world rather than the industrial control world. Right. We're seeing a lot of, of, of there's, a, it, there's a group called PyLab Robot that's right. making a, a, an open source Python drive to do exactly this. Uh, and we're as well writing Python shells for some of our, our commercial controls. Fantastic. Well, look, thank you for sharing your thoughts on that. I really appreciate that. Um, so there you go, folks. If you would like to know more about Festo, obviously the show is finishing today. So when people watch this video, they won't be able to come and see you on the booth. So where else can they meet you and where else can they get more information, Tony? Well, if anybody ever wants to visit up in Boston, we've got a beautiful research center there. Um, but www.festo.com is probably the easiest thing that anybody in the world can reach out to.
Fantastic. Well, look, I really appreciate taking the time out to talk to me this afternoon. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. So, viewers, there you go. If you would like to know more about Festo and their solutions, then check out their website and you can learn more about that or, as Tony said, visit their research centre in Boston. Um, and you can leave any questions for Tony below the video as well. So, Tony, once again, thank you very much for your time. Enjoy the rest of the show and have a safe journey home. And, viewers, thank you for watching. Until next time, as always, stay well and stay safe. Bye-bye.